The county town of Monmouth sits on the border between England and Wales, roughly defined by the River Wye. It is surrounded by rolling agricultural countryside and attracts visitors from across the world to enjoy its picturesque landscape and experience its fascinating history. Monna Bridge is world famous as the only fortified river bridge in Britain and one of only three similar structures in Europe. As the town awakes, we pass through 700 years of history with drovers with their livestock, civil war armies and owners of Rolls-Royce cars have previously made their way into the ancient town of Monmouth. On our right is Blestium Street, named after the small fort and iron working centre established here by the Romans, and ahead is the Robin Hood, constructed during the 15th century and one of the oldest buildings in the town. The broad main street once echoed to the clip-clop of horses' hooves and the trundle of mail coaches making the journey from Oxford to South Wales, having stopped over at one of Monmouth's numerous coaching inns. Today, Monmouth Street presents an interesting mixture of high street stores, award-winning independent shops, cafes and eateries. Blue plaques, ceramic poppies and information panels trace Monmouth's heritage. Tucked away behind the facade of shops on our right is Nelson Garden, where Horatio Nelson took refreshment in the company of Lord William and Lady Emma Hamilton when they visited Monmouth in 1802. Monmouth was then a bustling market town, and the main street narrows at a point where drovers brought their cattle, sheep and pigs under control before entering Agincourt Square, renamed in the early 19th century to commemorate victory over the French in 1415 by Henry V who was born at Monmouth Castle. This is one of the most historic areas of the town, largely unchanged in 200 years. The narrow thoroughfare ahead is Church Street, which we will revisit, and to the left of Shire Hall is Beaufort Arms Court, whose cobbled yard is a reminder of the age when this was a coaching inn. Various famous people have been associated with the building, including Nelson and the Hamiltons, for whom the townsfolk laid on a splendid banquet. Several decades ago, the Beaufort was converted into luxury apartments, but its courtyard retained its original features and provides a pleasant space to enjoy a cup of coffee or a light snack, and to relax a while from the world. An overhead view of the town reveals what is left of the castle and other significant buildings, many from the Georgian era, when Monmouth prospered from its importance as a county town. Shire Hall was built in 1724 and formerly housed the Assize Courts and Quarter Sessions from Monmouthshire. This attracted many lawyers to Monmouth who demonstrated their wealth by commissioning the building of large townhouses. Shire Hall also drew national attention as the setting for the trial of Chartist leaders charged with high treason for their part in the Newport Rising. They were sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered but after a public outcry this was commuted to transportation to Van Diemen's Land, now Tasmania. Peeping among the trees, alongside the parish church of St Mary, is what remains of the Priory, founded in 1070 by Benedictine monks. It is believed that the chronicler Geoffrey of Monmouth was educated here before going to Oxford, where he wrote a history of the kings of Britain and introduced the world to the legendary King Arthur and the magician Merlin. Priory Street was designed and constructed in 1834 as a bypass to take ever-increasing traffic away from the narrow Church Street, the main thoroughfare towards London, when numerous coaching accidents had occurred. Ahead of us is Herefordshire, and high on a hill, with commanding views of the town and countryside, is Monmouth School for Girls, established by the Worshipful Company of Haberdashers in 1892. Monmouth is an area of outstanding natural beauty and popular with walkers who can enjoy well-marked routes or may even wish to tackle the Offers Dyke path. This is border country and we are now looking towards Wales, the Brecon Beacons and Black Mountains. Rising just below the Black Mountains, near Craswell, is the River Mono which gives its name to Monmouth and which flows into the River Wye that skirts the edge of the town. The water meadows are known as Vauxhall Fields, so called by Mr Tibbs, then landlord of the Beaufort Arms, who in the late 1700s laid part of them out as pleasure grounds, 
similar to Vauxhall Gardens in London. These fields also have a dark past since they were the site of a short but bloody battle in 1233 between the supporters of King Henry III and those of Richard, Earl of Pembroke, who was also known as Strongbow. Around this period there were two gated entrances to the town, to the east, Dixton Gate, and to the west, Mono Bridge, which has served as a jail, a munition store, a lodge, and a toll house. Just a couple of miles to the west is the legendary Rockfield Studios, the first choice for many leading bands such as Black Sabbath, Oasis, and Stereophonics, and where most notably Queen recorded Bohemian Rhapsody. Monmouth Castle was built soon after the Norman Conquest and sacked by Oliver Cromwell's forces during the Civil War. Henry Somerset, the third Marquess of Worcester, then used much of the stone to build Great Castle House, which is now the headquarters of the Royal Monmouthshire Royal Engineers, whose history, from its formation as a militia in 1539 up to the present day, is told in the adjacent museum and on the town-wide poppy trail. Looking down from the front of Shire Hall is a statue of Henry V. In front of the building, another statue is dedicated to the memory of Charles Rolls, the motoring pioneer and co-founder of Rolls-Royce, who died at the age of 32 in a flying accident. His parents were Lord and Lady Langattock, whose ancestral home was at the nearby Hendra estate. Just a short stroll from Shire Hall is Church Street, a pretty pedestrianised shopping area. Despite its narrowness, Church Street was a main route into and out of the town before the construction of Priory Street relieved it of carts and mail coaches, and until quite recently, cars and vans. This is now one of Monmouth's havens, boasting restaurants, bookshops, craft and gift retailers. It also has a butcher's shop, a reminder that this was once known as Butcher's Row, where animals ended up after being auctioned in the marketplace, now Agincourt Square. In the heyday of horse-drawn travel, there were several coaching inns in Monmouth. One of these was the White Swan, which was the heraldic badge of Mary de Bone, the mother of Henry V. The inn's courtyard survives to this day, and is accessed by archways from Church Street on one side and Priory Street on the other. White Swan Court houses a small collection of independent shops and a cafe bistro. It is a delightful area in which to take refreshment, just as 18th century travellers may have done after stepping down from a dusty, bumpy mail coach journey. During the summer, the courtyard is festooned with bunting, and during the winter months made magical with strings of twinkling lights. Reaching to Church Street, a few short paces will reveal the large Priory Church, which has some fine stained glass windows and a collection of rare medieval tiles. In the churchyard is the gravestone of John Rennie, on which is carved an acrostic puzzle. The sentence, Here lies John Rennie, can be read in so many ways that its intention was to confuse the devil and ensure John's safe passage to heaven. In St. Mary Street, there is a period-style wall sign, created as a backdrop to a scene filmed here for an episode of Doctor Who. The Savoy Theatre and Cinema hosts live performances by some Britain's top entertainers, and shows the latest film releases. It is the oldest working theatre site in Wales, and the present building dates to 1928. The previous structure, known variously as the Assembly Rooms, the Theatre Royal and the Corn Exchange, was first given an entertainment licence in 1832. Just as today, Monmouth was a go-to destination for travellers during the mid-18th century, taking the wide tour by boat from Ross to Chepstow. Overlooking the river is Monmouth School for Boys, founded in 1614 by William Jones, a very successful merchant, a member of the worshipful company of haberdashers. A little further on is Monmouth Comprehensive School. Students from all three of Monmouth's senior schools have made their mark in diverse careers, and many are household names in theatre, popular entertainment and sport. The River Wye has been the training ground for some to gain success as international rowers, and its gently flowing water also gives great pleasure to canoeists, kayakers, paddleboarders and wild water swimmers. The river plays host to an annual rowing regatta and raft race that draws crews from all over the UK. 
The Y flows south under the remains of a stone viaduct and an iron bridge, both of which were part of the railway network up to the closure of the lines in 1964. Beyond is Redbrook, where once the finest tin plate in Europe was manufactured and sent to markets across the world, and the railway bridge that links the village to Penalt, a rural hamlet served by a medieval church dating from the late 13th century. The imposing Drybridge House was built in 1671 by William Roberts and greatly expanded in the mid-19th century by his descendant, Charles Crompton Roberts. He designed a parkland garden with a cricket pitch upon which the great W.G. Grace played in a team against a Monmouthshire side. Today it is a community centre known as Bridges. From here, the road leads past St. Thomas's Church with its beautifully preserved Norman chancel arch and in the distance can be seen the Kimmin, atop of which are the Roundhouse, once a gentleman's club, and the Naval Temple, funded and erected by the club's members in 1800 to commemorate Nelson's victory at the Battle of the Nile. The old bridge, reflected in the calm waters of the Mono, has stood as the town's iconic landmark for seven centuries, witnessing the passage of countless generations and endless changes. Now free from the passage of modern-day traffic, it will hopefully remain the pride of future generations and act as a magnet for visitors over centuries yet to come.